In this video, we're going to look at a problem that uses some properties of the gradient vector. So we're given a function, asked to find a gradient vector at a point, and relate that to the level curve, and then think about directions of maximum function increase and decrease from that point. All right, so even though it doesn't ask us to think about this, it's always a good idea to think about the function that you're working with. Uh, so this function we're working with here has a domain that's all of R2. And it's fairly easy to think about the graph of this function. Not every function that you will work with is that the case, but this one it is fairly easy to think about the graph of this function. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just so we can think a little bit about what our answers mean in terms of the function graph. So if I write z equals uh, x squared plus 4, y squared minus 16, my three traces when x equals 0, z equals 4y squared minus 16, so that's a parabola that crosses the z-axis at negative 16. I'm not going to worry about a scale here so much. And that will cross the y-axis at plus or minus 2. When y equals 0, looking in the xz plane, when y equals 0, I'll have a parabola that opens in the positive z direction. z equals x squared minus 16 will intercept the z-axis at negative 16 and the x-axis at plus or minus 4. And then when I do the cross-section when z is equal to 0, I will have 0 equals x squared plus 4y squared minus 16, which will be an ellipse. If you rearrange the terms, you see that you get an ellipse that intersects the x-axis at plus or minus 4 and the y-axis at plus or minus 2. So the graph of our surface is a paraboloid that opens up which allows us to think about the range of the function as well. So the range of the function uh, would be z greater than or equal to negative 16, or we could write that as an interval, negative 16 to infinity. So it's not required that we think about the graph or the domain or range, but that's always a good idea just to kind of wrap your head around what it is you are looking at here. Okay, so what it actually asks us to find is the gradient of f. So that is our vector of partial derivatives. And so when I take the partial derivative with respect to x, I'll get 2x, and the partial derivative with respect to y, I'll get 8y. So there's the gradient vector in general. If I want to evaluate the gradient vector at the point 2, 1, I'll just plug that point in. And then it asks us to sketch the gradient vector evaluated at the point 2, 1, along with the level curve of the function that goes through the point 2, 1. So first of all, I'm going to think a little bit about the level curve of the function that goes through the point 2, 1. So the idea with level curve is that that is where you have a constant function output. So often when we've thought about level curves, we've looked at specific constant function outputs and thought about the x, y points that give us that specific constant. But here they've given us a point and then we need to think about the level curve through that point. So one way to think about that would be to think about what the function output actually is at 2, 1. So I'm just plugging this into my function. So what we're interested in here is all of the points, all of the x, y points that have this same function output as the point 2, 1 has. So that's going to be my constant that I'm going to use for the constant function output. All right, when I rearrange some terms here, uh, I'll get an ellipse. So if I add 16 to both sides and then divide through by 8, I will get 1 equals x squared over 8 plus y squared over 2. Now when we draw that level curve, we're going to draw that in R2. Remember that the level curve is a set of points in the domain that have a specific function output. So I'm going to draw that level curve in R2, and then it asks me to also sketch this vector. The other thing I want, maybe want to think about is how that relates to the three-dimensional graph here. So I didn't use a specific scale on my coordinate system, but negative 8 would be halfway between 0 and negative 16, so approximately right there. So the level curve we're interested in is this slice on the 3D surface graph at z equals negative 8. So the level curve that I'm going to draw in R2 over here corresponds to this level where the function output is negative 8. So on my graph in R2, I'm going to go ahead and graph this ellipse. So this is an ellipse centered at the origin. I'm going to go from the origin in the x direction, square root of 8 units, which is 2 square root of 2, or about 2.8 units, left and right from the origin. And then in the y direction, square root of 2 units, so approximately 1.4 units above and below the origin. 
So there's the level curve that corresponds to the function output equaling negative 8. All right, and then it also asked me to sketch the vector, the gradient vector, at 2, 1. So we need to think about what that gradient vector represents. It tells us something about the function at the point 2, 1. So I don't want to sketch this with its tail at the origin. You could do that, but that's not really helpful, and it's not describing what is actually this vector is telling you about the function. So you want to be sure that you sketch this vector from the point that it's referring to. Sometimes we sketch vectors with tail at the origin if there's not a reason to put them somewhere else. But if there is a reason to put them somewhere else, you want to sketch them with their tail there. All right, so the tail of my vector is going to be at the point 2, 1. And then from there, I'm going to go right 4. So from the point 2, 1, I'm going to go right 4. So I'll end up over here at x equals 6. And then from the point 2, 1, I'll go up 8. So I'll end up at up 9 units from the origin. So my vector here, my gradient of f at the point 2, 1, has its tail at the point 2, 1. And then from that point 2, 1, I went right 4 units and up 8 units. And then there's my vector. And the other thing that should be important about that is remember that the gradient vector should be perpendicular to the level curve here. So it means a little bit of a hand-drawn graph. It, pretty much looks perpendicular, uh, but that should be perpendicular to your level curve through that point. All right, so at that point, we've done everything that it asked for the first thing here, and then I want to think about the second part here. I want to determine the directions of maximum function increase and decrease from that point to 1, and the rate of change of f in those directions. And actually, I have all of the work done for that. I just need to pull together what I have done and write it from my answer. All right, so uh, the direction of maximum function increase from the point to 1 will be in the direction of the gradient vector. So that would be in the direction of the vector 4, 8. Uh, so any vector in that same direction, so any positive scalar multiple of that vector is in the same direction. Uh, so you could also give the vector, say, 1, 2 is a simpler version that's a positive scalar multiple of that vector. Or sometimes our textbook likes to give these direction vectors as unit vectors. Um, so that would be perfectly fine as well. So if I rescale the gradient vector to be a unit vector, I would take 4, 8 divided by the magnitude of 4, 8, so divided by square root of 80. Uh, when I simplify that, 1 over square root of 5 and 2 over square root of 5. So the maximum function increase is in the direction of the gradient vector. If you prefer to write that or if you're asked to write that as a unit vector, uh, then you can rescale that to be a unit vector. But really if what you just want here is direction, then any vector in that same direction is still going in the same direction. Uh, and the maximum function increase is the magnitude of the gradient vector square root of 80 units of whatever output is per unit of input, x and y. All right, and then the other part that it asked me for here was the uh, direction of maximum function decrease, or we might also say minimum function increase. Uh, so that would just be in the direction exactly opposite my gradient vector. So negative 4, negative 8, or if you prefer any positive scalar multiple of that vector. And the decrease in that direction is the opposite of the magnitude of the gradient vector. So negative square root of 80 units of output per unit of x and y. OK, so the key thing here, once you find that gradient vector, being able to make sure that you can interpret what that gradient vector is telling you, uh, the other thing when you're doing the online homework is be sure that you're clear about how they ask for that. If they're asking for that direction vector as a unit vector, be sure you do that. If they're not, then any positive scalar multiple of the same vector should work.